When watching Jalen Green over the seasons, it was very apparent that he could be an amazing shot creator with absurd athletic abilities. But one glaring problem was his inefficiency as a scorer. When we look at his 2024 season splits, you can see that after All-Star break, something switched in Green's mind and he figured out how to get to his spots on the floor for easier looks. And even if he did take some more difficult shots, he was knocking them down at a much better clip. Some will say, well the sample size is much smaller and blah blah blah, but when you analyze the way he was scoring the ball, not only was there a noticeable difference in the confidence and focus, but the way he was scoring is highly sustainable going into next season. It may look simple, but when coming off this screen, a lot of guys might try to attack down the middle to get to the basket, but this is why the snake dribble is highly effective, because now Green can snake around to this open space on the floor, and with Rudy not being there to crowd him, Jalen can pull up with ease for the mid-range jumper. Again, here when coming off the screen, you tell me, where's the open spot on the court Jalen Green should try to get to? If you guessed right here in the middle of the floor, then you would be correct. Since Jalen's man gives up on the recovery from behind and DeAndre Aiden not fully stepping up, you allow Green to lift right into his jumper without a contest and this becomes an easy pull up from 16 feet out. But it's not just on these in-between range shots where Jalen makes life easier for himself, as when he starts utilizing those court navigation skills he possesses, this is when he can start to slice up the defense inside consistently. Now we all know that Green is a high flyer that can throw down emphatic dunks and convert ridiculous buckets in close. But in the same vein, those eye-catching moments aren't necessarily sustainable for the highest quality shots. When you understand to exploit angles and when to use certain moves to be defenders, this is when you can simplify your game to still get the same desired outcome. Take this play for an example. We've all seen Green come off these handoffs and take it right at the defender for a highly contested layup. And it's not to say that those draws are all the way bad, but when you can get the defender leaning one way to then Euro right past them, this is how you add in more layers that the defense will have to worry about when guarding you. You'll see here that Kawhi setting up right in front of Green on this drive. Now Jalen could go right at him, but this can end up in a charge. He also has the option to go baseline, but Kawhi could probably cut him off. So by feeding his Euro step around the charge attempt, he gets around Kawhi easily for this layup. Furthermore, when Jalen uses that screen at times to start his drive, he'll be met with multiple defenders waiting, so that's why he changes the directions with the behind the back to run Curry off the screen once again. Now as you can see, he only has one defender to beat in Kavon Looney, so when he pushes towards the right, he gets Looney's momentum leaning that way, and then wham! Here's where that Euro step comes in handy, and Jalen can get inside to convert the bucket which should have been an and one. These Euro steps can catch the defense off guard as Jalen serves him out of nowhere and this why being able to change directions in the blink of an eye is a highly important skill set. You'll have defenders try and blitz you when coming off these high pick and rolls, but when you can shift directions so quickly, it'll leave defenders in the dust and when Green has a clear path to the basket, it's gonna be hard to stop him. When these screen actions are set up near half court, it puts the defense in a tough position. Because if you play super high, then you might just get blown past like the last clip. But if you choose to sit back, then Jalen can come right off the screen and pull up right over you. So with all this space to navigate in, Green chooses to direct his attention to the middle of the floor with the crossover. And with Keontae George on his hip, he really isn't going to cause much friction on this finish. I know this skill may seem simple and isn't the most flashy at times, but when you can make the defense have to guard you going one way to then incorporate the Euro to go back the other way, it sends him out the play and another two points is added on the board. This ability to read and react to the defense in a quick manner is what separates skill slashers from the rest as you must realize you're opening on the court and attack them with aggression. When getting downhill versus San Antonio, Jalen has one man to beat to the basket, so with a relentless nature, he pushes towards the rim, absorbs the contact while maneuvering the ball away from the contest, and completes the bucket plus the foul. Like I said, you must spot these openings and attack them hard, but you also have to make sure that when you get to the basket, you're ready for what's to come. Key example, when coming off this screen, Jalen knows he can get past Anderson with ease, so it's all about being ready for the help down low. Once meeting Gobert in the paint, Jalen could have tried to extend out to the left or right, but this would result in Gobert possibly getting a hand on it. So instead, Jalen gets in the air to absorb the contact, out hang Gobert to double clutch this shot, and the friendly bounce awards him the bucket. This right here is why it's great to have that leaping ability, but not to lean on it, because you will have those times where Green is able to soar to the basket and use that hang time to outbeat defenders, but then you'll have these other times where it's not about jumping high to outbeat them, but instead have that body control and strength to clash inside with the bigger bodies to then knock them out the way as you go finish. This is all a testament to all the ways Jalen can finish inside while keeping things relatively simple. For guys that are athletic like him, they tend to opt into the most difficult shots by solely leaning on that aspect of their game, but when they can approach the game in a more direct manner, it helps them out greatly. But hey, it's not just on his drives where Jalen found to simplify things, because with his driving nature being such a threat, he can now use that to his advantage as defenders will camp out waiting for him, and instead of trying to outhang or muscle defenders, the elbow jumper is pure money. 
You can see versus Suns here that Jalen has the mismatch with Nurkic on him, so if he wanted to, he could use that speed to get past him and attack the rim. But with KD and Booker right there, this isn't the smartest idea. So when he does initially attack the basket to then be cut off, he uses that behind the back to escape the situation while bouncing out into space. And at this point, he could find Van Fleet sliding up that sideline. He also has his dump off pass available to Jabari Smith on the baseline. But with this space and clear look at the basket, the mid-range jumper is also a viable option. These snatchbacks are probably one of the most effective and simple moves for Jalen to use when getting open, as he'll have the defender ready for him to continue all the way to the paint, so when he snatches back abruptly, it catches them off guard opening up this gap, and the contest is now far too late. Not only will it cook defenders in that in-between area, but when Green is guarded tightly above the three-point line, he can now yank back out of nowhere and look at the position Corey Kisper is in versus Jalen Green. One is still trying to recover back while the other one is loading up, and this one is now bombs away. It's honestly a hard task for defenders to keep Green contained because at any moment he can use that absurd speed to get past you all the way to the rim. He can dish out combo moves to break you down to then get to his spot. And if you're to give him any amount of space, then he has the confidence to rise up and let it fly. Like look right here, when coming off this screen, his defender is still attached to his hip thinking he has him funneled into the big. But with that bounce and handle, Green can use that in and out side step to get all the way to this mid range wing. And now the jumper is completely wide open. When defenders are bought in on not letting him get to the basket, well here's where you can launch off them to get behind the line and with pure confidence, he gets right into the shot when you're just a step too late. And trust me, it doesn't matter if there's two defenders on him, when Jalen's feeling it, he'll pull it right over the top with no problem and with that smooth handle he possesses, he'll spin back away from the defense to get the space needed and then nail the jumper. For Green, it's all about keeping things more simple and taking what the defense gives you. A lot of the time we would see Jalen forcing the issue or going for the more flashy plays, but that's not what yields the best results most of the time. Sure will we see those times where the flashy plays from him make the top 10 highlights, of course. But with him learning how to use one or two moves and picking the more open spots on the floor, it'll lead to better percentages and flow within the offense. Jalen Green is an amazing shot creator who just needs to find his groove and be more poised. We all seen flashes of this after All-Star break where Jalen went on a true heater, so hopefully going into this next season we can see more of that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you're first to know when I upload. I thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.